All right, let's talk some numbers. I want to talk about this because I've, this is something I've gotten a lot, is what stats do you recommend? I've had people suggest that I make my own statistic, but I don't really know exactly uh, the best way to do that. But I figured this could kind of get us close to that, which is letting you know, I think the best way to use numbers to evaluate uh, a quarterback in particular, because that's what we care about, right? The quarterbacks are the important thing. All the other stuff matters as well, but the quarterbacks are the most exciting one. So that's what we're going to do in today's video is I'm going to try to talk about what the best way to evaluate a quarterback without watching any of their film is. I think film is an inherent important part of this process, but we're going to take that out of the equation. You have 15 minutes to figure out how good a quarterback is. You know, you can only look at numbers. Here's how you're going to do it. Well, I decided to create a little formula on uh, the way that I typically like to look at numbers to make my decisions on this stuff. Step one, look at a PFF grade and passer rating. I, I wrote PR rating. Okay, so already off to a great start. Uh, passer rating to get an idea. You could also use a stat called EPA per play, which is estimated points added per play if you want to. But basically my idea is look at these good stats that aren't necessarily perfect stats just to get an idea. So you look at a stat, you know, you get the idea of what the player is. Step two, this is very important. Check turnover worthy plays and compare it to interceptions. A great example of why it's important to do this is Tom Brady last year, who had a high number of interceptions, despite the fact that he had an incredibly low number of turnover worthy plays. This means that he was getting unlucky, and that's the main thing that you would attribute that to. Luck is a very real thing and a very important part of football. And especially when you're looking at a stat like passer rating or EPA per play, a turnover can really swing that stuff. And so it's important to pay attention to turnover worthy plays and make sure that the turnovers are earned instead of just lucky. Finally, check how good they are at different depths of target. I think this is another very important thing to talk about because sometimes people are going to get a higher passer rating or higher EPA per play by throwing a lot of check downs that are working out, right? You want to be able to make sure that when they're throwing the ball down the field, they're having success. When they're throwing the ball over the middle, they're having success. And still, if they're throwing shallower down the field, they're having success. But sometimes someone's you know, uh, passer rating can get inflated due to the fact that they're throwing a lot of short passes, but they're actually not scoring a ton of points. So let's use Kirk Cousins as the example. I just sort of chose Kirk Cousins as someone who had a good season last year, I think, and a lot of people might wonder, did he really have a good season or was he just lucky to get there? Well, let's talk about it. So first, let's follow step one. Cousins was sixth in PFF grade and tied for fourth in passer rating. So these kind of popcorn stats, very good. I shouldn't say popcorn stats entirely. Popcorn stats would probably be more like touchdowns and, you know, passing yards, which I just don't even pay attention to, quite frankly. Uh, touchdowns a little bit, maybe, but like really not. I don't. Uh, these are the stats I tend to pay more attention to. Although I should mention, passer rating has uh, th both of those two statistics wrapped up in it. So it's kind of, you know, that's, I think, a fair thing to point out. But okay, looking at these stats, it's probably fair to assume he had a pretty good season last year. But now let's go to step two. Kirk Cousins had the 17th most turnover-worthy plays last season, but the 29th most interceptions. So with this, it's probably fair to say, okay, he did get a little bit lucky. Maybe the tied for fourth and passer rating should have gone down a little bit. And even, I think Pro Football Focus takes that into account, so I don't think that would affect their grade too much. But the passer rating possibly could have gone down a little bit because he did get a little bit lucky. It's not massive. It's not one of those where, like, he was, you know, uh, second in most turnover-worthy plays, but 29th in most interceptions or something like that, which, you know, can happen on occasion. But still, that's a reasonable thing to pay attention to. And finally, depth down the field. So this final chart at the bottom, this is going to be how well he ranked in PFF grade and passer rating at each section down the field. So 20 plus yards down the field, 10 to 19, 0 to 9, and then behind the line of scrimmage. You see his pro football focus grade and passer rating were both top five, uh, you know, 10 yards down the field, uh, whether it's 10 to 19 or 20 plus. Very good at that stuff. Kind of the one area he struggled a little bit was zero to nine, was mediocre there, but that's that's good, I think. That, to me, feels like, okay, you're not just inflating your stats by making easy throws. He was making difficult throws and still doing well. So 
using this sort of formula, what I would say is Kirk Cousins, probably not the sixth best quarterback in football, probably not the tied for the fourth best quarterback in football, but had a very good season and probably did have a top 10 season last year. Moving over here, these are some just stats that I find okay, stats that I find solid and that I think it's fair to, if basically, if someone brings up one of these statistics in an argument, I don't roll my eyes. I say, okay, well, that's a fair point. Uh, sort of you know, passer rating, which I think is good. Uh, offensive points per drive. I actually think that's a pretty solid stat. Just simply looking at how well the offense does in terms of a points per drive basis. Uh, just I think that that actually does translate pretty well. I know that obviously there's so much more that goes into it than just the quarterback. But the quarterback plays a, such a big role in an offense that you know, it's kind of similar to passer rating. Where you have to pay attention to the, the talent around them. But as long as you understand it within context, it can be a useful statistic. Uh, yards per attempt is another one that, again, have to understand the context, but can be a useful statistic. And then EPA per play, again, estimated points added per play. My one kind of critique of this stat is it feels like this stat in particular, people don't view it the same way they view passer rating when they should. It is entirely, in fact, I think it's maybe even a little bit more so uh, reliant on the talent around you. It's simply just when you throw the football, what are the end results? What is just purely, you know, the results based uh, outcome of that? And again, there's nothing wrong with that over a big sample size. It can be great. And even in a smaller sample size, as long as you understand the context, it can be a very good statistic. But you have to understand the context that it's a team stat just as much as it is an individual stat like all of these are, which is why they're okay stats in my opinion. There's also some buy snap good stats that I would recommend using. These are stats that I consider good, uh, like adjusted completion percentage, although I do have an asterisk next to it. The purpose of the asterisk is just to remember that it still is a completion percentage. So while it is adjusted and there, you know, drops are taken into account, uh, and all of that stuff, you know, throwaways are taken into account. Still, at the end of the day, if you throw the ball shallower down the field on a higher percentage of your snaps than the average quarterback, your adjusted completion percentage is going to be higher than the average quarterback. So it's another one of those. Just make sure you also pay attention to depth down the field when you look at that statistic. Pro football focus grade, I think is good. They take into account what they should take into account. They take luck into account, all that good stuff. So uh, I would consider that a good stat. I would also consider, uh, you know, turn of worthy play percentage to be a very good stat to pay attention to. Again, turn of worthy play percentage is not going to inherently by itself let you understand, you know, who's good and who's bad, but it can help you build a bigger picture. Good cumulative stats. These are stats that I pay attention to when I am looking at my MVP uh, ballot that I do not have, but make anyways, uh, which is, you know, war, which is, this is PFF war. Basically the way that they do that statistic, and it's not available to the public, unfortunately, but they tend to release it for like the, the big name guys uh, towards the end of the year anyways. You can still sometimes find some nuggets, but it's not available re regularly, but it's just the graders go through each, you know, play and they say, did you, you know, what would have happened if just an average or a replacement level player was out there? What would have been the difference? And they, you know, use probably EPA or maybe it's a different model, but the same kind of general concept to see what would the points value have been differently had that player not been there. So it's a really good stat. It almost always, uh, you know, translates very well to wins and all that stuff. So I just wish it was available to the public. Uh, total EPA added another one where, you know, EPA can be a cumulative stat as well. Again, same thing with same issues I've talked about with EPA per play. It's just on a, you know, cumulative basis now. One final point, this list right here, these are every quarterback in the past five years that have uh, ranked top five in passer rating. That's simply what this list is. Have you at some point ranked top five in passer rating in the past five years? And you look at the list, it's a lot of really good quarterbacks. I mean, kind of the exceptions to the really good quarterbacks, you have like Kirk Cousins on there, you have Ryan Tannehill on there. Uh, maybe you could argue like Lamar Jackson, but I, I don't think I would because uh, he was amazing. He won MVP that year. To me, like this pretty clearly tells you like, okay, the guys who are getting top five in passer rating are really good quarterbacks. Maybe a couple of just good instead of really good like Cousins and Tannehill, but most of these are really good. Going over to a PFF grade, it's largely similar. Again, a lot of really good quarterbacks here. You also have Ryan Tannehill on this list. 
you know, Roethlisberger and I guess Carson Wentz is probably the worst quarterback to appear on either of these lists, but he was still very good that year, you know, uh, so I get it. I get why he was top five, so I do understand all of that. So the main thing I'm doing here is saying, hey, with some of these statistics, what it's going to do is it's going to do a great job at getting you in the ballpark. If someone is really good at one of these stats, they're probably really good. Like, that's realistically what it is. I think you have to use accumulation of a lot of different statistics, and you have to understand uh, the context behind a lot of them. But I think if you follow the formula at the beginning, it, there might be some exceptions, because there's always going to be exceptions, and pay attention if someone brings up an exception. But as a whole, you pay attention to those, you know, following the three rules. I'll throw the three rules on the screen once more, just so you can, you know, uh, get one last look at them. Look at a PFF grade and passer rating to get an idea, uh, or passer rating rating, if you wrote it like I did. Uh, check turnover-worthy plays and compare it to interceptions, and check how good they are at different depths of target. As long as you do these three things, typically it's just a PFF grade and passer rating is going to be enough to get there, but sometimes number two and three will actually explain away some of the other questions. So that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.